This afternoon on Mountain Patriot Homestead, we are going to be talking about preparing and we're going to be trying out some chicken and dressing in the Instant Pot. Y'all stay tuned. Since we're talking today about preparing and preparation, I thought I would make a dish today using the Instant Pot. Now this is the first time I have ever made this, so we're going to see together how it works out. But I am using a variety of things here that came right out of the cabinet, right off the shelf, and I just wanted to show you that just by gathering up a few things and even using leftovers, you can make a dish for your family. Now, as I said, I'm going to be using a variety of things. Now, this first thing that you see here may look like the most unappetizing thing you've ever seen. However, there's a reason why a lot of the canners, people who can, call this ugly chicken because when you can chicken, it doesn't turn out pretty. It's not a pretty thing in a can. So I am uh, just going to open up this. I'm going to try to open up this. It's always the hardest thing to grab the edge of this. But um, I am going to open up maybe this jar of chicken. Hopefully without making up some words as I go along. There we go. I'm opening up this jar of chicken and this white substance that you see on top, don't get all scared, that's nothing bad. That is actually the fat from canning this chicken. And I know some people, you know, they pull every bit of fat off of their food because they've been told it's bad and all this type of thing. Um, I got made a big old mess. But you know, for me, Fat in a meat, now not too much, but fat in a meat for me is uh, flavoring. And so I like the flavor of some fat in my meat. And so I'm just leaving this uh, fat that came off of this chicken. Now this chicken was uh, some chicken that I canned up. It's a quarter chicken and it was canned up and it's uh, been sitting back there on my shelf. It makes it shelf stable. And that way, when I need something quick like this, I can just grab it off the shelf. I could, we could actually just eat it just like it is. We wanted to drain it and make chicken salad. If we wanted to make a gravy to go with it and put over some rice or potatoes, we could do that. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. Don't, don't overlook canning meat. If you come across a really good deal on some meats, you can can meat and keep it on your shelf. So if something happens and your refrigerators, you don't have access to refrigerators or anything like that, you can go grab a jar off your shelf and you've got meat. Now, that was just a quart of chicken that I put in there that had the broth with it. So the broth, the chicken, and that, you know, good fat is in there. Now something I like to do is I like to flavor as I go because I don't, I don't like bland food. But, you know, each person has their own taste. Now me and my husband differ because I can salt stuff and he'll come behind me and he'll salt his again because he likes more salt than I do. But you know it things are what you and your family eat so what uh, what i used here is i just have this is from i got this at dollar tree back when it was a dollar uh it was garlic and pepper but it's also got some salt in it it's just mixed up but you know if all you've got in your cabinet is salt and pepper you go grab it and then this is just some poultry seasoning again i'm pretty sure uh, Oh, I got this at the Benton Dent, and um, I don't remember what I paid for it, maybe 50 cents. I, I didn't pay much for it. But this is just some poultry seasoning that I'm just, as I, as I layer, 
I'm going to be seasonings because I just, I don't like to get a mouthful of something that's just blah. So uh, the next thing I'm going to put in, and this is, again, a jar that I jarred up, I canned up myself. This is onions that uh, I canned up and I have them back there. So when I want onion in something and I just want it fast, um, it's already cooked up. It's already soft, ready to go. But this is just a jar of onions. Again, I am going to be putting it in there just like this. I'm not draining it or anything. Hopefully it don't turn out too soupy, but you know, if it does, uh, I'll eat it soupy. I'm, I'm not that picky. Now, I'm not going to stir this stuff up. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of spreading it out because what I don't want to do is when I get to the final layer, I don't want things to be stirred up and it become a mush. That's not what I'm trying to do. I haven't told you what I'm trying to do. That would probably be, be helpful. I, will, I just had me a hankering for some chicken and dressing. Now, not my mama's chicken dressing which can't be beat I mean that that's what when I fix uh, chicken and dressing or turkey and dressing that I follow my mama's recipe but tonight I just wanted my husband it's working late I just wanted some chicken and dressing that I could fix up fast with what I had and I'm trying to use up some cornbread that I had left over because we had uh, cornbread and milk last night do y'all like cornbread and milk now here's where my husband and I are different again he likes cornbread and but uh, cornbread and sweet milk. I like cornbread and buttermilk. So let me know in the comments if you. I'm throwing things at myself. If you like uh, cornbread and milk. All right, I am going to pause this for just a moment because I really don't want to put all this liquid in there because I'm afraid I'm going to get too much. So I'm going to pause the video for just a second, drain this, and I'll be right back. And I'm back. Now what I have here is just a little bowl of dried onions, dried celery, and dried bell pepper. Now this is all homegrown. We grew it right here on the farm and I dehydrated it. This is some of last year's crop. And I just wanted to use up, uh, I've got all this stuff fresh. Uh, I just, I wanted to use up what I had um, in the cabinets because you know you got to rotate your food out you don't want to don't want to leave everything sitting around forever so I've just uh, just put this in some water and I've let it set until everything in here is soft and I'm putting this in there and again as I said I am not gonna stir stuff I'm just gonna kind of spread it out a little bit. Um, the reason I'm not stirring, as I said, I, when I put my cornbread in there, I don't want everything to just get soupy. Uh, I'm going to come in here and just put another little layer of flavor. I'm not doing a lot at one time, just a little bit at a time, just to get those layers of flavor in there. Kind of got to get rough with your poultry seasoning because it's real fine and it likes to gum up in there so just like that but uh, I don't know about y'all but I love poultry seasoning and I love sage I grow my own sage and I just I love sage and rosemary I don't know what your favorite herbs and spices are but I love sage and rosemary now, before I forget, as, as I'm making this, because I'm using the Instant Pot, Instant Pot, I know that drives some people crazy when they say Instant Pot, but the Instant Pot, you can use any type of pressure cooker. It don't matter what. I've got another brand. I've got two of these and another brand. I can't think of the brand of it right now. But... You know, any type of pressure cooker, if you know, if you, that's what you want to cook it in. But, you know, you could do the same thing in a, a casserole dish, but I think you would have to adjust your cooking time. Uh, but the reason I've got my layers of liquid at the bottom is because if you don't have liquid on the bottom of this, when it starts cooking, 
all of, all of a sudden it's going to tell you it's overheated and it's going to burn. So I put my liquids on the bottom and then I layer up as I go. Now this next thing that I'm putting in here, uh, I could use cream of uh, chicken if I wanted even more chicken flavor, but uh, I'm going with some uh, cream of mushroom. I, do y'all like cream of mushroom? One of my kids would just, they like the cream of mushroom, eating it as a soup, and it is a good soup, but uh, a lot of people don't know that you can even eat it as a soup because all they've ever done is put it in a casserole, but you can eat it as a soup, and it is wonderful for seasoning up various dishes. So, I, and what I could have done is I could have mixed this up with those vegetables, with those dehydrated vegetables that still had the moisture in it, I could have mixed it up with this and it would have poured so much easier into there, but instead I just kind of left it all in there. Like I said, uh, cooking, now some people, you know, especially trained people that know what they're talking about, would say that cooking is a science in my almost six decades, I have not found that it's real scientific. I fly by the seat of my pants every time I cook, it's an adventure. Um, and I've found that if I'm doing pastries, I'm sorry, it's gonna get loud here for just a second. I'll try to hurry. I have found that baking, especially pastries and that sort of thing is definitely a science as far as if you want fluffy biscuits and, and tender pie crust and, you know, you want your baked goods certain ways, it is definitely a science. However, the way I put together stuff, there is no science to it. It is purely luck. So, that's what's going on today. Here's a message to my children. You know, all those times that you ask mama for a recipe for a certain dish and I go, um, I'll have to get back with you on that. I have to go find a recipe, honey, because uh, mama don't have no recipes that really for most of the stuff I cook because most of my stuff is just, like I said, flying by the seat of my pants. So, sorry. All right, so what I'm doing is I have got, like I said, I will had is I have some leftover cornbread here and I'm not gonna crumble it completely up. I'm gonna break it up into some pieces and I'm gonna put it in this pot here. And hopefully I didn't get too much liquid in here because I want enough liquid, it's not gonna burn, but I don't want so much liquid that it's gonna be cornmeal mush because that's it's not the texture I'm going for. I'm really wanting some dressing. Can you tell I'm kinda wanting fall to hurry up and get here? Now I have to say these last few days of temperatures have been so wonderful. Um, you know, these in the 60s when you get up of a morning and uh, today people was talking about it's so hot. It was 82, 82, it's not hot. But you know, each to their own what they consider hot. But to me it's not hot, but uh, I thought that, I thought after it being 102, it felt pretty dang good. So, all right, I am about done getting this down in here and I will show you, I'll have to take the camera off the tripod here, but I will show you here in just a minute what this looks like and we'll get it into the Instant Pot here in just a second. So y'all hang out. All right, and here is looking down into the pot. I didn't show uh, this part, but I did go back and add some more poultry seasoning and some more of that garlic pepper salt uh, because I just, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of flavor. So now I'm just going to stick on the lid and I have, sorry for the water spots, I have set it to seal I'm going to come here and push manual, and I fixed eggs in here last. I, I, this is how I make my boiled eggs. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set this for 20 minutes 
and it will pressure up and once it pressures up, then it will, as it cooks, it will start counting down. Okay, so see, it's telling me it's on, but it will have to pressure up. And then once it pressures up, it will count down. And just in case you've never used an Instant Pot. I was going to go sit outside on the porch, but I don't think I'm going to leave this. Just in case it decides to get too warm. So today we are talking about preparing and because the seasons are about to change and we're start, starting here to already feel the temperatures uh, cooling down some. I mean, we've went from the field like temperatures in the hundreds to now down into the 80s. And I have to tell you, all that does is make me so much excited because I love autumn. Autumn is my favorite weather season of the year, and Christmas is my favorite holiday season of the year. So, today when I ran to the Little Bent and Dent store, which you've heard me talk about in other videos, uh, I picked up a couple of uh, things that remind me of those seasons, and I will take these to work and use them in our curry there. I've already got some that I've put in the camper so I can use there, but I've got some peppermint spice for autumn because you know real soon everything's going to be peppermint spice, but I've got that. And then I picked up a peppermint mocha latte. Now I've already been drinking some of these at work and I have to say they are excellent. Uh, I paid $2.99 a box for 12 of these and they are so good. But, uh, you know, as the seasons change, we start preparing, getting ready, winterizing things. Uh, just like when we start to go into summer, we make sure that our AC is going to be working. And, and uh, so we're, we should be preparing all the time. Now, a lot of times people think, sorry, I've got stuff on the table from when I was cooking. Uh, people are sometimes look at folks that talk about preparing of, oh, you're one of those, you're a prepper, you must be a hoarder. No, it's not the same thing. Um, and I'm not even gonna get into the difference between prepping and hoarding today, but I just want to give you some examples of why we should prepare. Now, by prepare, again, I don't mean that you go buy out everything in the store. What I do mean, though, is that no matter what the circumstance, you try to prepare as best as you can for unknown situations that could pop up. Now, I don't mean the zombie apocalypse or anything silly like that, but what I do mean is uh, now here where we're at, we live on a mountain. I probably do not need to prepare for a tidal wave. Could it happen? You know, if the Lord wanted it to happen, it could happen. However, is it probable that a tidal wave is gonna hit us up here on the mountain? No. Is it possible that we could have a tornado or a fire or, um, in the winter time, ice storms here will shut everything down. For one thing, we may be able, even if we can slide down the mountain, we may not be able to get back up it. So if we have an ice storm, we're here for the duration because we don't want to get stranded and not be able to get back home. Uh, if we had nothing here that was depending on us, that might not be a bad thing. Might be a vacation to go get a hotel room in town. However, we've got a lot of animals and things here that depend on us to take care of them no matter what the weather is. So, you know, we have to be prepared. And wherever you're at, you have to be prepared for circumstances. And you have to get past the thinking, well, if something happens, because, um, one of the things I used to train whenever I was an instructor, the way I would train was not if something happens, but when something happens. So don't play the what if game, play the when game. Uh, for example, I wanna tell you 
have y'all seen the news coming out of Maui? You probably don't think of wildfires striking one of the Hawaiian Islands, but Maui, if you have not seen the news about Maui, please look it up and pray for those people because my goodness, the fire just sweeping through and that village where people are just leaping from buildings into the ocean to escape the fires. So, uh, you know, they probably were not expecting that to happen. And not only did that happen, but 911 went out. One of your critical infrastructures, it went out. Cell phone towers, down. No way to contact, even if 911 was working. So, um, you just have to consider what if something happened? What is the wildest thing that could happen where you live? Prepare for that. Now, you don't have to start big and try to fill a warehouse, but do you have, do you have extra Tylenol around if somebody's running a fever? Do you, have, uh, do you have bandages? Do you have pet food? Do you have your food? Do you have an alternate light source if the power goes out and you don't want to sit around in the dark? Uh, just, just start with little bitty things and build on that. But try to put together a plan and everyone should have plans, especially if you've got children in the house. You should have a plan of what's going to happen. What are you going to do? How are you going to react if something happens? Do you have a meeting place for the family? If, if the house were, and I hope this happens to none of you, but what if your house were to catch on fire? Do you, have you taught your children how to get out of their room safely and where to meet you so everyone has a central location to meet up if, if something happens. And again, I hope nothing happens, but that's the whole point. You prepare for the worst and hope for the best. That's what preparing is. It's just like, um, like I just showed you this recipe that I put together. Those things, the dehydrated food, the canned food, uh, even the store-bought stuff, all of that stuff is bought in preparation of preparing a meal. Now, I could have left that stuff on shelves for much longer time, but I just wanted to, I wanted a fast meal today. I wanted to use up that leftover cornbread, as I always say here at Mountain Patriot Homestead, waste nothing. And so I was just wanting to use up what I had and just use some of the things that I already had on the shelf. That's something that you can do. You may not can your own food, you don't have to, but you need to make sure that you stock up with things that you can just pull off the shelf. This meal that I'm making here, if the Instant Pot was not available if it um, the electricity was off. I've still I've got a gas stove. I could cook on the gas stove. I've got a fire pit outside. I could cook on it. There are still ways that I can cook even if the power's off. And let me tell you, when we've had ice storms and the powers went down, we have had to use those alternative sources. The same thing could happen with you, just the power grid go down. You know, you've heard heard threats of, oh, you know, the power grid is so strained uh, that it could go down. And you've heard this in various places. And it's uh, not a one-time thing. Uh, when the Texas grid went down, people were shocked that it happened. However, there's only so much strain that you can put on a service before it can't function anymore. It's like our water system around here. Uh, quite frequently, we're under boil orders or things like that, so we have to be prepared that if what all of a sudden we come home, we don't have any water now, what do we do? Well, we have alternatives, and 
that's what you need to be thinking about. What if it's just something simple? You come home, the water's off, um, you need to flush the toilet. Uh, you may be able to drink your bottled water, but you know it's gonna take an awful lot of bo uh, bottled water to flush your toilet and take a bath in. So what are you gonna do? Okay, so just little things like that. You may have candles in case the lights go out. Do you have a way of lighting them? Uh, you may have flashlights. Do you have extra batteries? Just those little things that we don't think about all the time, but it is really nice to have them when something happens. I'm hearing the Instant Pot. I keep looking over there. I'm hearing it. It's, it's starting to let off some steam because it's heating up, so it won't be long before it seals. And uh, I'm anxious to see how that chicken and dressing turns out. But when I come on here and I'm talking about preparing, I don't want y'all to think that, you know, I'm moving into a bunker and I've got, you know, this warehouse of, of food and stuff stored up. That That is not what I'm talking about. I just want everybody to be prepared not only with goods, I want you to be mentally prepared because if you play, and the reason I keep bringing up the what if and when games is this is not, uh, it's not something that's just I thought of out of the blue. This is, again, as I said earlier, I was a law enforcement instructor and this is a game and I say game, it was, it's really not a game, but it is, it's a mental game that prepared the officers and me and my patrol partner played this quite frequently of not if, but when. When we roll up here in front of this convenience store and a bad guy runs out with a gun, what are we gonna do? And so we were prepared that if something happened, we didn't even have to talk because we knew what each other were gonna do. That's just how we functioned. And that is the same way around your home. You should prepare with your family so well that if something happens, you don't even have to talk. Everybody knows what their role is. And it, you don't have to wait until your children are grown to practice this. You can start teaching them from when they're very small uh, fire safety is something I, uh, because it's something that happens probably the most often, uh, but fire safety is something that I encourage, especially young parents, get with your fire departments and ask them, is there any training? Is there any books? Is there, can they just talk to the children and to you and teach you what to do in case of an emergency? you'll be really surprised at what little kids can do. And I know a lot of folks are like, I don't want to scare my kids to death. Well, I don't want little kids hiding in the closet trying to hide from fire where firemen can't find them either. I want them to be able to be found and be taken to safety. So they need to know how to handle situations just like grown-ups, but you just have to put it into their mindset and, you know, not like talking to a grown-up. You hear it clicking. It just clicked over and it's starting to count down. So hopefully we'll see real soon how that, I, I'm, I'm getting hungry, can you tell? But I want to see how that chicken dressing turns out. So again, uh, the Preparations are something that I find to be very important and because I care about y'all, uh, I, I know that I come on here quite a bit and talk about preparations. And if you would like to hear more about preparing uh, for certain situations, please let me know and maybe we can get some more of that type of, more type of that on here, that topic. Well, I am going to let this pot finish counting down, and once it's done, we'll come back and see how it turned out. 
So y'all hang, hang out there and we'll be back shortly. And here is the outcome. I have to say it's not the prettiest dish I've ever looked at, but it looks pretty edible. I will not be mama's chicken and dressing, but uh, I'm ready to try it. What do y'all think? All right, I am going in, folks. Let's see it is a little softer than I would have liked. I'll say that right now. I think less liquid would have been fine, but you know, also if I would have given it a little time and let it let it sit for a little while, it probably would have stiffened up some, uh, but I was kind of anxious to see how it was gonna turn out, so I'm sure this is not as good as it could be. Um, I would say that uh, I would, see, because the, the texture here, I don't know, let me get closer. You see the te helps if I hold it up where you can see it. The the texture is a little soft, so um, it's not what I was going for. Okay, let's uh, let's try that with some. If I can grab the chicken. Well, this stuff is hot. Try not to leave my tongue scalded, but, um, you know, I really think next time instead of doing it in the Instant Pot, because everything's already cooked, it really doesn't have to cook, I think, and I may even do that with the rest of this, I may put this in the skillet and put it in a scorching hot oven, um, like I was cooking cornbread or biscuits, and stiffen this baby up and get some bread because my favorite part of the dressing is the because I make my dressing I don't make stuffing I make dressing and I like it when it's cooked in a skillet I always make mine in a skillet and I like that crispy edge that uh, is around the edge of that iron skillet and so I think uh, that's the part I'm gonna be missing here but that first little taste with the flavor was there, so let's see how this is. Oh, hot. The flavors are all there, though. The flavors are there. It's just the texture is not, the texture's kind of mushy, which I was kind of afraid would happen, but I'm telling you, I think I could probably turn this into the skillet and put it into the oven and stiffen it up and it would be good. I'm not gonna waste it, I'm gonna eat it, but uh, that's that's what I would do. Um, I think in a skillet would be a lot better. But anyway, yeah, the flavors are all there. Flavors, the flavor is good. So, there you go. That's what I did. I just kind of threw together a quick supper. Thought it took just a little bit of time and it would have took no longer for me to have cooked it in the oven. Cause I'm telling you, I'd have probably put it in the oven at 450, 500 degrees in a good hot skillet. This would have stiffened up and would have had that crispy, e crispy, crispy edge on it that I like and it would be perfect. And, uh, but again, everything I do is an adventure. So y'all try out, go to your cabinet, see what you have, experiment, experiment with your leftovers and try to make new meals out of old favorites. So anyway, there you go, folks. Hope y'all have a wonderful evening. I love y'all. Hope you come back hope you come back real soon. Maybe I can talk better when I'm not so hungry, but we'll see you again next time. Mountain Patriot Homestead, signing out.